What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. I just want to throw out a real quick update. Um, I've been getting quite a few emails lately and uh, like through messages on Facebook and all that. I uh, wanted to know my thoughts on when I completely gutted the Jeep about four, three or four months ago to raptor coat the floors and then put down the sound mat. So everybody's wanting to know how's it holding up? Am I happy with it? That kind of stuff. So today's video, I'm gonna let you know what I think. So like I said, about three or four months ago, I went ahead and completely tore out pretty much the whole inside of the Jeep's interior. I'll put a little video right up here showing you what that looked like. Um, I did this because I was worried with going out, traveling, off-roading, all that kind of stuff, that the Jeeps are known for rusting. And I really wanted to kind of get a hold of that before anything started because this Jeep was in really good shape when I got it. So I decided, pull everything out, I love Raptor Coat. I've had really good luck with it. Um, when I did the undercarriage of the Jeep itself, I didn't use Raptor Coat except for in the places where I knew if a rock came down, it was really gonna smash into it. I wanted really good protection. So the main part of the Jeep, I used something called Chassis Saver, which is really nice, holds up well, gives a really good OEM finish. But I wanted something a little more durable in case I wind up going through deep water and it was really i needed something that was really going to seal and protect the floors so like i said i had really good luck with raptor coat it applies super easy the only downside is watch your overspray that stuff can go on anything and you won't notice it till it's too late and by then it's probably set in and it's not coming off that easy so i went out and i bought um it's four bottles of raptor coat came with the spray gun and it came with the uh, epoxy hardener that you're supposed to pour into the bottles. I picked it up at the local parts store, like AutoZone O'Reilly's. I believe it was about $140 maybe for the whole thing. They do sell it on Amazon. I went with black. You can get tintable if you want other colors. Now, a few of you have asked me in the emails and said, even before I was considering doing this, I started putting feelers out on Facebook, asking people what they thought about Different types of, uh, I know there's like, you know, there's Raptor Coat, Herculiner, all the lizard skin, all that kind of stuff. Um, somebody had asked, is it okay to put Raptor Coat on the inside? Because they were saying that when it gets warm, that there's a chance it's going to release some kind of fumes. I can tell you, I did reach out to Raptor Coat. I did ask them all those same questions. They told me 100% fine. And I can tell you, after four months of using this thing, it's fine. There's no odor. Um, it didn't even smell after I did it. It doesn't smell now. No problems. So basically, once you mix the two together, you spray it, it cures. That's when all the smell comes out, everything hardens up. You're good to go. I can tell you, unless you set this thing on fire, you're gonna be fine. So don't worry about any kind of harmful gases being released. And like I said, and I did, I'll show the video, I did it on the whole entire floor. So trans tunnel, right over the top of the muffler, all the way back, the whole thing. I have had no issues with any kind of smell coming off the floors. Now another thing that I did, I actually put down a heat sound deadening material through the whole bottom of it. I believe the name of it was Silex. I did find it on Amazon. Um, I know, again, there's all different types that you can get. I just found this one was going to be the best one for what I needed because it doesn't have the foam in between the heat mat and the sound deadener. Uh, the foam, if you're gonna do that, I highly recommend doing something like that on maybe like a, you know, a hot rod class cruiser car or something like that, because you're not gonna be swamping this thing in any kind of water. And I was afraid with the foam that you get water in there, that's what's gonna start to really smell and grow mold. So the one I went with, again, put a little picture right up here, the stuff laid down, super nice, very easy to do. Now, a few of you have emailed me and asked me questions about how that's working out. And I can tell you, awesome, works perfect. Now, I'm not going to say it's going to cut down every little bit of heat that comes up from the trans tunnel, but it does block a lot of it. Um, I have noticed the before and after, and especially with the now getting into the uh, spring, summer times, the temperatures are up. Today was like 95 degrees. Now, luckily, my Jeep still has air conditioning. If you haven't seen that video, check that one out. I put a link right up here, taking you right to that video. I had a small leak, we were able to find it, fix it. I got AC again. 
And I can tell you before, I'd always have to have the AC on full blast to kind of cool off the inside of the Jeep. But now between the Raptor coat, the heat sound deadener, and the new carpet that I put in that has the mass backing on it, I can actually turn the AC down. I don't have to run it on full blast anymore. So I've run my hand all up and down the trans tunnel and that's where a lot of the heat would come blowing up from underneath. Because like you know on the Cherokees, all that heat on the engine bay has got nowhere to go so it goes right down the trans tunnel and just heats up all that. But I can put my hand down below and I don't feel any more of that heat blowing up from underneath. So I can say it's not 100% perfect, but I'd say it's at least 90% better than the way it was. And I'm very happy with it. Still looks just as good as it did when I first put it in. Still feels good. It's not fraying up on any of the corners. I did throw down a set of QuadraTech floor mats. Uh, I did not go with the WeatherTechs just because I wanted to save a little cash. And I can tell you, these ones, they fit perfect. I got both sides and I also, picked up the rear now the rear one goes all the way across one piece molded perfectly super thick works out really good so if you're looking for uh, floor mats i can tell you these quadratex for the price they were shipping was great highly recommend so now some of you are asking about the carpet how big of a pain in the butt was it to put in i can tell you that was the first time I've ever done a complete carpet setup and it was a little overwhelming, but it is doable. So I've learned since then there are tips and tricks on how to get the carpet to lay down better. Um, I did all this over the winter, so it was really hard. A lot of people said, take the carpet out, put it out in the sunlight and then work it that way. Or even get a heat gun or like a carpet, like a, um, a steamer and that'll help you lay it down. I didn't have those options. I think when I did it, it was probably, you know, 40, 30, 30 or 40 degrees outside. I don't know. Um, so you live and learn with it, but I'm really happy with how it turned out. I can tell you the carpet company that I went with to get it, awesome quality. Um, anytime you made a cut, it doesn't want to fray off on the ends. So it's not like you cut it and it's just going to keep falling apart. The cuts were clean. The cuts were perfect. No fraying issues. The big thing was there was just a heck of a lot of carpet. So if you're going to do this, be prepared to trim the carpet down and take your time. Now, a few other people have asked me, why did I do carpet? Why didn't I put down like a vinyl? Um, I don't know. I'm just kind of a fan of having that carpet. It kind of makes it feel nice in there. I don't plan on doing any kind of like, you know, four foot, five foot deep water crossings like a lot of these people do out there. Um, I'm not looking to destroy the Jeep. I'm really looking to just get out, enjoy the sights, have a nice, you know, nice time out camping, meet new people, hang out, that kind of stuff. Do some light wheeling. This isn't an extreme rock crawler by any means. I mean, it could probably, it's capable, but I'm not looking to destroy this thing. I want this thing to last me a while so I can go out and really just kind of enjoy the outdoors. Now, I know some of you out there are thinking, well, if you're going to build it, you might as well beat it up, you know. And that's not my thing. I had an old Jeep. I had an 89 Cherokee. Uh, started out good, light wheeling. Next thing I know, destroyed it. I think every panel on that thing was beyond smashed to pieces. It was fun while I had it, but that's not why I built this Jeep out here. Like I said, I built this thing to be able to get out, travel, camp, have a good time, and just kind of see the sights. I don't want this thing upside down on its roof. So when it comes to water crossings, I'll do them, but I'm not gonna sink this thing. But that was the whole purpose behind doing the Raptor coat and the uh, heat mat and all that. So if water does get in, everything is solidly protected. I don't have to worry about it rusting out eventually. So between using the Raptor coat, the heat and sound mat, and then in all the places you can't get to, I use 3M fluid film. A lot watched a lot of reviews on that stuff. Um, the good thing about it is it sprays out like a big thick wax almost. And that is highly recommended for the places that you can't get a spray gun to spray Raptor coat or a paint gun or whatever into. You just spray that in there. It seals everything up. I do recommend doing it probably once every year just to make sure everything's still coated. A lot of guys use that stuff and they spray it all in their wheel wells, but over time that stuff wears off. So if you're going to do that, you're going to have to stay on top of it or you're going to have bigger issues. And I'm about four months into having this project the way it is. 
and I would definitely do it again. If I bought another Cherokee or uh, Wrangler or whatever, I would totally tear the interior out and do the exact same thing I did to it as I did in this one. I have learned a few things in doing it, so it shouldn't be as bad this time. But if you're sitting at home and you're wondering how do I protect my interior and keep it good looking and clean and nice and original looking, definitely take the steps I did. Raptor coat, heat mat, throw down some OEM carpet. Definitely get the mass backing on the carpet. I believe that that's what really helps hold the carpet together. And it also works as another layer of a heat block. But if you're just looking to take the thing out and do some mud and tear it up and all that kind of good stuff, throw it on some Raptor coat or whatever you decide to do. I just prefer the Raptor coat because of how easy it is to spray yourself. You don't need to have the carpet and all that and the sound deadening and heat mat in there if you're just gonna take it out and rip it through the woods and dive into all sorts of mud pits. But definitely wanna protect those floors from rotting out. Or if you're sitting at home, you just welded in brand new steel into the floors, why not? Go the extra mile, protect the thing so it's gonna stick around for a long time. Put all that effort into it, right? Might as well wanna make sure you protect it well. So as you may have noticed, four-wheelers pulled out, Jeep's backed up to the garage door. I'm ready to get getting ready to go on a trip, heading out fishing. Hope you guys will like that video. If you haven't seen the first time I went, this is our yearly family trip that we go to. I'll put a link right up here, somewhere up here. I'm not sure because the camera's probably backwards. I don't know how I got to figure that out. But I'll put a link to that video up there because we're heading back down to do some trout fishing. Really excited about that. Another thing, just wanted to take a quick second to say, if you haven't checked out the donation video, please do. Make sure you share that with your friends because all the money made from that video will continue to be donated. I've got good news coming, which I'm not gonna release just yet. I'm still in contact with the companies I'm trying to get the money out to. Once I do, you'll be the first to know. And like I said, I truly wanna thank you because without you guys watching the videos, that money wouldn't be there to help out a good set of organizations so they can get out there and do what they need to do. Keep an eye on the donation. Uh, I made a separate playlist called the Donation Playlist. So at any time, go in there, give it a watch, share it with your friends, spread the word. Let's keep this thing going. These organizations need this kind of money to really help them do what they need to do. But like I said, without you, you can't make it possible. So I am really thankful for you guys out there watching these videos. But for now, I gotta get this thing cleaned up. I gotta do an organization on the Jeep, make sure I got all my stuff ready. Make a list of stuff I guess still put in there. But as always, you guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. I'll catch you in the next video. And by the way, if you guys follow me on Instagram, you'll see that my brother-in-law just picked up a nice rooftop tent for his 4Runner. He is on his way out for a week-long test of that thing. And when he gets back, we're doing a side-by-side -side comparison of the my soft top rooftop tent and his hard shell rooftop tent. We're going to let you know what we think about both of those. Can't wait to get that video out to you guys, but that's going to do it. Again, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. See you next time.